Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again on our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna cover five oddball comic defects. Stay with us. Welcome back. If we're just meeting, my name's Drew Stewart. I'm the owner of Como Comic Books. We're a Columbia, Missouri based comic book vendor and you can find us at comic shows and comic conventions all around the region. As I was sheltering in place this week, I, in a sense, got called out by a friend of mine. Andy McMahon is the owner of Duncanville Bookstore down in Duncanville, Texas. He is a overstreet advisor and he's just an all around good guy. And part of his business model is doing live stream sales on Facebook. So I was kicked back on the couch watching Andy do his thing and somebody posted a question when he had talked about the condition of a particular book. That particular book had foxing on it. So Andy was responding to the question. I'm typing a response in the chat uh, to help educate this shopper. And while this was going on, Andy, Andy called me out. He said, you know, if I'm not one to uh, let a challenge go by the wayside, so here we are. So today's video is going to be explaining five oddball comic book defects. We're gonna start with the defect that started it all, foxing. This is not an uncommon question. It's one of those comic book defects, damages that is, is not your, your run of the mill item. You know, everybody's seen a blunted corner or a dog-eared cover or a page, some spine pops, that kind of stuff. Those are common run of the mill things. Foxing is something that's not as common. If you have been around books for a while, you've surely seen it. If you've been in the industry, whether collecting, buying, selling for an extended period, you've certainly owned books that have foxing. And foxing, once you learn how to identify it or see it for the first time, you see it everywhere. It kind of breaks the glass and as soon as you see that, then you know what you're seeing. What foxing ultimately is, is kind of up for debate. Some people think it's a version of like a mold growth. Other people think it is a form of oxidation with iron either in the paper or the ink. What it all boils down to is ultimately it's some sort of a chemical or biological reaction in the actual paper itself. The result of this reaction is rusty or tan or brownish looking blotches across the cover of your book. Typically, these aren't gonna be surface defects. Like I said, it's a reaction that's actually in the paper of the book. So it's not gonna be something you're gonna be able to clean off if you're doing a little light surface cleaning on your book. It's going to be the stuff that's left behind. Still some debate on where foxing comes from, whether it's contagious, whether it'll migrate from one book to another book, what conditions are prone to causing foxing. The one thing that everybody can agree on is that it's better to be safe than sorry. So if you do have a book that's pretty heavily foxed, if you're concerned about the, the health and the well-being of the rest of your collection, it may be best to segregate that book that has foxing just to be safe rather than sorry uh, in the event that it does turn out that foxing is contagious. Which again, at this point, X number of years into the collecting hobby that all of us are, we still don't know for sure. So it may be a whole lot about nothing, but who knows. What's the weirdest defect you've ever seen in a comic in your collection? Leave us a comment below and let us know. Our next defect that we're talking about is rust migration. I can see where some people may be confused by this. You know, we're talking about a comic book. How are you gonna get rust migrating into a comic book? And I'll tell you, the smallest little details are the killers because where rust migration comes from is the staples. Those two little metal staples in the comic book can be the source of some of the most nagging defects you will see in a comic book, whether it's staple tears, stress at the staples, or discoloration, rusting, and the eventual 
migrating or migration of that rust into the paper of your comic book. Rust migration is the result of your staples oxidizing. This is a defect that can actually happen while your comic books are stored. If you're storing your comics in a place where they uh, have prolonged exposure to an increased moisture level, that can cause oxidation of the staples. When your staples begin to oxidize, that discoloration, that rusty buildup on the staples, if it's allowed to continue on long enough, can eventually start to be carried into the paper fibers by that moisture that's present in and on the book. In extreme cases, your oxidation or breaking down of your staples can get so extreme that the staples literally melt into the comic. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, you know, pulling books out of people's basements, people's attics, we're here in Missouri, it is humid and nasty for many months of the year. I've literally seen comic books that no longer have staples and it's not because they were removed. They melted into the paper and the rest of the book, it's gross. You will see in the slightest cases of rust migration, you'll just get a little rusty, orangey, uh, reddish brown discoloration in the paper around the staples. And as that grows, it, it can get lighter around the edges. Um, but eventually, if it's a really severe case, you almost see the area, the paper area around the staples turn black and brittle, and it's disgusting. Um, and it, it really is just a killer. And a story I have about rust migration, I believe I read this in either an Overstreet or the magazines or chat boards one day. There was a really high-grade copy of Incredible Hulk 182 that someone had stored in what they thought was a safe environment. It was a waterproof safe. Unfortunately, the seal in the safe trapped all the moisture in the safe in there with the book. And whether it's moisture in the air, if it was drawing additional moisture, the moisture content inside that safe got to be so high that the staples started to degrade in this incredible Hulk 182. By the time the owner found it, the staples had completely rusted away into this book. So you're looking at a 9496, just gorgeous copy of Incredible Hulk 182 that is completely ruined at, at best grade. I don't, I don't know that you could pull a fair out of a book with rusted out staples. So you're probably looking at what went from a near mint to near mint plus copy of a book to a poor to fair copy at best just because it wasn't stored correctly. So tip of the day, make sure you're actively watching the humidity level in your comic book storage area. Our next defect, we're gonna talk about dust shadows. Now this one has a couple different names and they're all kind of cousins in a sense. You have dust shadows, oxidation shadows, and sun shadows. Sun shadows are the worst because that is light fading. And if there's anything you can't put back into old paper and old inks, it's vibrance. So the sun over time bleaches things out. That you're not coming back from. Dust shadows and oxidation shadows, sometimes you can get a little bit of, of that back because a dust shadow is when you have a stack of books and they're not completely even. So you've got a part of one book that's sticking out from underneath or above the books around it. And that additional exposed part of the book is gathering dust and dirt particles that are in the air and also being oxidized by the air that the rest of the book isn't exposed to because it's stuck in the pile beneath all those other books. So typically when you see this, it looks like a straight line of dirt or darkness or discoloration on your book. If it is, if it is truly a dust shadow, sometimes you are able to take 
some of that surface dirt and you can kind of lessen the impact of it, it can be hard to get it all. If it's oxidation, it's gonna be tougher to get some of that back. And if it's sun fading uh, or a sun shadow, you're probably not gonna be able to do much of anything. The telltale sign with one of these shadow defects though, is like I said, it's usually only a portion of the book and it's almost always a very straight edge because it's just whatever part of that book that was not covered up by the books around it in the pile that was sticking out that suffered this damage. Our next defect is store or date stamps. This is a question I see a lot. People are concerned what the impact on a book's grade is if it has a store stamp or a date stamp on it. And it's not just stamps. Uh, this date can also be handwritten in with grease markers, really common from the, from the Silver Age. You see pencil a lot in the Golden Age. Unfortunately, some people did also do this in ballpoint pen. There's not a lot you can do about ballpoint pen, but if you have a good cleaner, a lot of times grease pen, pencil, things like that you can remove if it's something you're worried about. But for the most part, a store stamp or a date stamp is not gonna be a very impactful defect on your comic book. It's kind of like a referee or an umpire in a sporting event. It's just part of the field for the most part. They're, they're that prevalent, they're that common. It's not gonna be a big hit to your grade. I've seen Silver Age books that are 9-2 and above that have a store stamp or a, a received date written on it. Not a big deal for the most part. Now there are also examples out there where somebody had a stamp and they celebrated it and you know, it's the book is stamped to the point that it's actually a distraction from the book. It's not done in a tasteful or conservative manner. You know, if it's got four or five stamps um, for the store's name and they're all over the cover or right across the heart of the art, something like that it can be subjective but for the most part as long as it's not an intrusive stamp or something that's just very detracting from the quality of the book don't worry about a store or a date stamp you'll be fine with it our last defect for today's video is the spine roll if you're not familiar with the spine roll it is a very common defect in most comic books that have been stored for a long time or comic books that have a bit of age on them Spine rolling is essentially when the left edge of the book migrates either frontwards or backwards as a result of pressure and stacking of the books. Primarily when you're gonna see that is gonna be if books are stacked all the same direction because if you look at a comic book, it's actually thicker on the side by the staples. So if you stack books up, just all going the same way. Eventually that pile is gonna to start to lean like that. The pressure and prolonged exposure to being stacked in that uneven manner will cause that left edge, the paper, uh, either at the front of the book or the back of the book to begin to migrate one way or the other based on how it's stacked. Now there's a couple of different kinds of spine roll. An even spine roll is when the book kind of all moves together. So you have the top and bottom edges are rolled a reasonably similar amount. There's also a version of this called a progressive spine roll where the spine roll is greater at one end of the book, whether the top or the bottom, than it is at the opposite. I've seen books like this. I actually own uh, a Strange Tales 110 that had the worst progressive spine roll I've ever seen. Thankfully, spine rolls are easily fixed by most any qualified presser. If you're interested in a book and you're worried about having it removed, don't let the spine roll talk you out of that book because it is very easy to fix. All right, that's our list for today. I hope it was informative. If there's a defect we didn't touch on that you would like to see us cover, drop us a comment down below and we can work it into another video or maybe we can just drop you a comment back and let you know what the deal is with that. If you've enjoyed the content of today's video or any of our other videos, please continue to share, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to check out Midwest Comic Collectors on Facebook.